For those of you who are not able to make it to our first meeting, these are the three important documents you definitely need to look over at this point. One is your initial student communications, your syllabus, and then your materials list. The initial student communications talks about how we're going to be starting off the semester. Things are going to be flexible. Things are going to change. It's just the way the world is right now. So I appreciate your patience. I will also be trying to exercise my own patience. Because we are split into A and B groups and we have had students adding and dropping, I'm going to be sending you an updated A group, B group list uh, whenever your group is meeting in person in class then that is your day to really take advantage of the time that you spend with me learning from me and whenever your group is not meeting that will be a day where you're either focusing more on research and your writing and doing those activities that are part of your artistic process or you will be following along with instructions from home this may be videos that I upload this could also be worksheets or handouts that have like itemized instructions with them so if you're not meeting in class with me on a particular day there are still going to be things that you're going to be responsible for but it should be very clear i'm not trying to like punish students because we are in a little bit of a weird time so i'm trying to make us have the most successful class we can possibly have so just make sure that you go over your initial student communications because there is important information another note is if you ever notice something that seems odd out of place maybe it seems like something i had talked about but it's not what we're currently going to be doing in our track because it's very likely that our plans are going to be changing this semester send me an email let me know communicate with me communication is the most important thing in this class if for some reason you can go to a group A day when you are a group B person and you'll know you'll be out of town, send me communication beforehand and that way I can make accommodations for you. You know, don't just show up to a, a day that you're not assigned because I may not be able to accommodate you. So clear, open communication with me at any point in this class is going to be the best way to make things successful. It's not ideal, but it is what it is. Let's see. Um, there's also a little sample schedule there for you in your initial communications. This is subject to change. It's not 100% set in stone, but it gives you an idea of the flow of our semester and the expectations for on-campus participation. If you cannot abide by the university rules for participating in person on campus, you don't need to be in class. So make sure that you understand what the rules are and are prepared to follow them to the letter. I'm not your babysitter. I'm your professor. So I expect you to behave in the way that allows you to work within the university system. So make sure that you have that all set. And then you can always contact me, of course. Please contact me anytime you have a question. The syllabus right here outlines our course objectives, our course overview, basically what this class is supposed to do for you is it's going to give you the tools to communicate effectively in 2D. Whether you're doing fine art, whether you're teaching other people art, whether you're a designer, doesn't matter. It's all about visual communication and this class is designed to give you the best leg up, the best foundation that you can get if you interact with everything thoroughly so that you can begin to communicate visually. If for some reason you find yourself unable to attend class, oops, that's a little bit out of order. Let's see, missed one. Doo -doo. There it is, that's the one. Right there, okay. Um, so yes, attendance for class. Um, the time that you have with me is very precious. I suggest you take full advantage of it. If you can't, you know, be there for a certain thing, I understand. I will be flexible for you, but do understand that like, especially if you're a person who really likes to learn, you know, physically, hands-on, all that kind of stuff. Your class time is going to be very important to you, so make sure that you are prioritizing it. And if you 
need to accommodate if you need to shift things around communicate with me and we will find something to work out um if you have any kind of symptoms of covid any exposure to covid it's not just your classmates or myself that you affect it's also the vulnerable people that we are interacting with so don't come to class find a way to make things happen if that is the case we will work with you um, but don't expose others in the classroom setting um course our you need to overview our course structure um, whenever we have classwork you need to bring all the supplies that I will communicate with you with to that class and then most of our focus is going to be on class projects as well as critiques and so that will be the majority of what we spend our time on in this class is preparing yourself for these projects and then going and analyzing them and critiquing them together as a class learning how to learn from our mistakes and learn what successes work and where we should channel our energy this is our grading breakdown as well and the distribution of grades as you can see art projects are the majority of this class everything else sort of supplements those projects which are our main focus and then of course read the mass policy be prepared to follow the mask policy exactly. I will not sit here and remind you in class if you are doing something off, if you're not, you know, if you're hovering close to other people, not obeying social distancing, all that sort of stuff. I'm not going to ask you to follow the rules. You're either going to follow the rules or you're not going to be in the classroom. That's the end of the story for any kind of health and safety, mask policies, etc., etc., etc. Of course, your academic integrity is key at the university and then um there is a disclaimer for nudity that may happen you there may be artworks that have nudity that we work in them we're not going to be doing any life drawing in this class but there is going to be some exposure to the nude form if you have any accommodations that you need here are the guidelines for that as well as our safety policies and the what classroom etiquette that I expect you to attend to. The classroom etiquette is very important, especially in this class, as we are going to be dealing with some unusual health and safety regulations. There's also a photo release consent as well, basically saying, hey, the department may be taking pictures of you at some point to demonstrate for, you know, their advertising purposes what students in this um, school are doing. So there's going to be a photo release as well. But let's really jump to the materials because that's the big point that I want to make for you for the rest of this video is like what materials you need, when you need them, what kinds are good, what kinds are not as good. Da, 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 da. So um, I'm actually going to start off with your dollar store supplies because these are... Um, pretty easy to get. Now it doesn't have to be from the dollar store. You can go to Walmart. You can go to the art store if you want to. Um, but the idea is that you're going to be getting some materials that we're going to be testing at different levels. So sometimes you'll be testing something that is what's called a craft level or a child's or a, a kid's level paint. So that would be something. So what you might be doing is taking and comparing a you know, very cheaply made craft or child's level paint. You might be comparing that with a student grade paint. So these are higher quality for sure. Winsor Newton makes a Cotman line in their watercolors and the Cotman line is a student grade. It's going to have a lot more color options and possibilities in it, but it's not quite as permanent or long lasting or even like just in general, the way that it applies is high quality is something like an artist grade paint. So we'll be looking at those comparisons. So from the dollar store, what you should have is some watercolor, a watercolor dry pan set, um, a pack of markers, just Crayola style. If you get Crayolas, that's honestly fine too, but you know if you're gonna go cheap you may as well go super cheap so a pack of markers you'll need some you know dollar store colored pencils these are like 
no name brand don't get anything better than crayola um you can get up to crayola if you already like have one or two lying around um but some colored pencils at least if you're only going to have one get one black and one red one and then you will need a You'll need a Sharpie style permanent marker. It can be Sharpie brand, it doesn't really matter, but a permanent marker. You'll need acrylic red craft paint. So it needs to be the cheapest possible red craft paint that you can find, but it doesn't need to be acrylic, no oil paint or anything like that. And then just a cup for mixing or cleaning in. It doesn't have to be as fancy as this cup, you know, literally any cup or small bowl that you can use for mixing your paints and your waters in, for cleaning in. And then a set of mini lidded containers right here. I'll be giving you some samples of materials that I just don't feel like are necessary for you to have to purchase. And so those materials I'll be giving you samples of. So anything this size, a little bit larger is also fine, but just several of these small lidded containers to use throughout class. That's what you'll need. It doesn't really matter where you get these from. They can come from the dollar store. Anybody will supply this stuff. All right, so then from your fine art supplier, some of the stuff you can get at a place like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, some of the materials, but some of the materials you're gonna need to really come from an art supplier like binders, like the KSU bookstore, like Blick Art Supplies. There's Blick has sent us a coupon, so um, I will be providing you a link to that coupon if you wanna go to Blick. And the, they will also be on campus as well. Blick will be on campus, I think, Wednesday and Thursday. And Binders is also on campus at some point in time as well. So what you're going to need is you will need one sketchbook, unlined pages, so blank sketchbook right there, um, at least 8 inches by 10 inches. This one right here, you can share it with another class you can divide it up into sections just make sure that like if you do split it with another class that you like put tabs in that clearly label like this is what this class is and it's only in that chunk don't like make me skip around from page to page to page um so a notebook you will need a second notebook you will need a second notebook as well. One that is dedicated solely to this class. So this notebook, I do not allow you to split up. This one needs to be at least nine by 12 and it needs to have mixed media paper in it. So it needs to be able to be something that can accept both dry media, like your drawing tools and wet media, like your paints. For this one, if you like follow the instructions in this class, really well for your materials notebook and you spend the time that you really should be spending to make this a nice reference tool for you this is the kind of notebook that you could keep with yourself for 30 or 40 years to go back and reference to all of these little swatches that we'll be making to test different materials they're going to be affixed into this notebook so you can get you know any mixed media notebook and it will work for this project as long as it's 9 by 12 or bigger but what I really do recommend for you is get like the nicest quality one that you can find unfortunately the bead paper company this year went out of business so they are no longer going to be available but just if you are going to an art supplier store and you do feel like this is a notebook that you would want to keep, like a nice high quality one with good quality paper that will last you your lifetime, talk to whoever works at that art supply store. I would honestly talk to people who work at art supply stores anyways, getting their recommendations and stuff. I have worked for an art supplier myself before, and they are very helpful. It's very helpful 
to use the knowledge of somebody in that store to really get an idea of what materials are going to work best for you. All right, so you've got your notebook that you'll need. Let's discuss markers briefly. So you are going to need at least, you're gonna need at least three Tombow markers right here. You need one that's black. Black is always in 15 right there. You'll need one that is red. There are many red options. Pick whichever one you get. I'm not gonna be particularly picky about which red you pick. This one is actually kind of pinkish, but it works for what we're going to be doing it for. And then you will need one blender marker by Tombow. And that is always the N-O-O. So you'll need three Tombows. Why I like them is because they have two sides. So you have a brush tip and you have a bullet tip. And they're water-based markers. So we're going to be comparing water-based ink to alcohol-based ink. Um, you will also need a micron pen of your choice. Um, make sure that it is actually black. That one's a brown one. Make sure it's a black pen and you can pick the tip. So you can either get one that's very fine, one that's very thick. You can get a brush, you can get a plastic nib. There are other companies who make similar ones like Faber-Castell and like Le Pen. If there are completely out of microns. You can get a Faber-Castell or a Le Pen, but micron is the most archival. It's what the um, United States government uses to write their archival documents on. So this is one because we're gonna be doing a lot of tests on durability and light fastness. I suggest testing the micron because it's going to give you the highest performance of all of the black inks that are alcohol based. You, you will need a pack of Conte crayons. Um, Conte Apri is the most common one and you do need to get the four pack. So this little one that looks like a matchbox right here has four of your colors that we'll be testing. Um, and that's just for you a little bit easier than trying to get like a set of blacks and a set of sanguines and all that sort of stuff. So the, the four pack of the Conte Apri, Conte crayons. And then you will need to either get a sketching set or to get um, these individual things. If you already have those individual things because you've already been doing drawing or something like that, or you have a drawing class that you're also taking, and so you're gonna have some materials that kind of overlap, you don't have to get the sketch set. It's just the cheapest way to get all of those things if you don't have any of those things already. So. In that sketch set, um, you need at least three weights of graphite. So graphite comes all the way from like 9H, 8H, 7H, 6H, 5H, da 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 da, all the way to HB, which is a number two pencil, incidentally. And then it goes um, 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B. The H, the higher the H number, the lighter the pencil, the higher the B number, the darker the pencil. You need one HB. Any pencil that has an H on it with a number and then any pencil that has a B on it with a number. So if you already um, if you already have that then you're set to go. You don't have to buy the set. You'll also need a vinyl eraser. A vinyl eraser is what I call like um, are heavy eraser and you'll need a kneaded eraser which is what I call like a soft eraser a much more gentle eraser this is the kneaded eraser and this is the vinyl eraser don't get pink pearl um, it's not a good eraser it's not good for this class um, but so at least a vinyl and a kneaded there are many other erasers that artists use whether it's a sanded eraser very aggressive, great for colored pencil work, or the gum erasers, which are not my personal favorite ones, but they do a good job. They're just a very dusty eraser. They have a lot of crumb to them as well. 
you'll need either a blending stump or, or it's also called a tortillon or you may um, you can use a chamois cloth which is leather or faux leather cloth those are both good for blending so you'll need either one of those and then you'll need some form of charcoal if you already have some go ahead and use it this could be in the form of a compressed charcoal pencil like I have right here this is compressed charcoal in a pencil um, or you may use charcoal sticks so charcoal sticks can be either something like vine or willow which is very soft very light gray um, consistency or you can get compressed charcoal as well which is a much deeper darker consistency right there much much heavier right there compressed charcoal so you need at least one sample of charcoal if you have both bring them both Whew, you can see already be careful with your charcoal kind of keep it in a separate baggie because it does want to get everywhere and you'll just wind up with like thumbprints all over everything you touch okay so we did graphite vinyl eraser charcoal blending stump pencil oh okay need eraser and a pencil sharpener so you can get any pencil sharpener that basically works i will say though that if you are used to only having a kind of like cheap and crappy ones get a new one every sharpener comes pretty sharp but the more expensive ones take longer to dull so if you've got if you've had a cheap one for a while it's probably dull and what it's going to do is this, especially with your artist grade pencils it's going to shred them eventually and you'll you'll lose your point before you ever get to a nice sharp point I do recommend, most artists are going to recommend this, that you have a separate sharpener for your graphite than you do for your colored pencil. I'm not enforcing it, but it's really highly recommended. You're going to lose a lot less material by keeping a separate one. So I have one by Prismacolor that I use strictly for my colored pencils. Some people even have a separate one for their cool colors and their warm colors. Um, so I have a Prismacolor. This one catches all my shavings, makes that easy. And then I have a separate one for my graphite. This one is by Blackwing. Very high quality um, producer of graphite materials, especially for architects. They're really well known. So I keep two high, pretty high quality um, pencil sharpeners. One of the things you're going to learn in this class is like... Sometimes, yes, you can buy the cheapest thing available. And the cheapest thing will work for a while. The cheapest thing will work for a short, a short amount of time. It will. Um, but eventually, you're going to have to replace it. And while you're getting to that phase where it really needs to be replaced, you'll often find that it can, like, screw up your materials, mess up your work. It can snap your leads while you're trying to force it to go. So by buying a little bit higher quality material you save yourself some grief time and you actually save yourself money over time because you're not having to replace it quite so often Colored pencils are where you're going to find the most options pretty much of anything that we have in this class and that can be very daunting to you. So let's talk about what those mean. You need at least one student grade of colored pencil in red. The two brands that I am the most familiar with who make a student line are the Prismacolor Scholar I don't know if you can read that, but it's a Prismacolor Scholar and a Blick Studio. There are other brands who make that. Usually if it says Studio or Scholar, that means it's student grade. We're going to be doing comparison tests between those. So you need at least one red of those. 
you can pick the red. You know, there's many choices. You pick it, but try to, whichever red you pick, make it the same red as your professional. So if you choose a magenta professional, choose a magenta student. If you choose a carmine professional, choose a carmine student, etc., etc., etc. So you need one red student pencil. Then you'll need four artist grade pencils. There are several artist grades as well. There is Cran d'Ache right here. The Luminance. This is probably the most expensive of all of the artist grade options you're going to run to. But it is also the most permanent and the light, most light fast. So if you do select this brand, when you come to do your light fastness tests, you're going to notice quickly how much better this pencil is than probably any other one you'll see. Um, but you could also choose between um, a Prismacolor Premier pencil, which is, ah, here's a Prismacolor Premier right here. These are both wax based, or you could choose um, a Faber Castell polychromos pencil and this is an oil based lead so that means that the solvents that you can use and you can actually use solvents with colored pencils are going to be different for Faber Castell than they are from Prismacolor or Cran Dash. I will be providing you solvents if you want them in class you don't have to buy those so you make your choice whether you want to choose from any artist grade line and there are several there are more than what I'm just even covering here but these are the ones that I have I personally am going to be using Cran, I mean, sorry, I'm personally going to be using Faber Castell. So I will be using a red or magenta, a cyan or a blue, a yellow, and a black, CMYK. The particular ones that I'm using for this class are Alizarin Crimson, Middle Phthalo Blue and light chrome yellow and then just their standard black so those are the ones i'm going to be doing you don't have to get these ones exactly but if you look at the colors of these match these colors you know as closely as you can to whatever brand you get um so this will be helpful for your testing we're asking them doing color charts in color pencil one of your color charts Like I said at the beginning, you're going to need a student grade of watercolor. Windsor and Newton and Van Gogh are the brands that I know that will sell individual tubes of student grade. So those are the lines that I, I'm saying that I know to recommend. There may be other ones who make like a student grade where you don't have to buy a whole set. Windsor and Newton sells in both pans and in tubes. Van Gogh is just tubes as far as I know. This right here is my student grade or Cotman line of Windsor and Newton watercolor paint. And this is my red right here. This is my Alizarin Crimson that they make. So you'll need one red and it can be cadmium red, Alizarin Crimson, doesn't really matter, of a student grade watercolor. Um, and you will need a Daniel Smith 66 dot card. And you'll need a Daniel Smith 66 dot card. I've got the 238 card, um, which is like $25. The 66 dot card is only five. Um, if you wanted to get and this one and try all the colors that they possibly offer, it's a great option for you. Samples are amazing. And they're really a great way for you to try out a line that you don't know if you really want to commit to. These dot cards, which I know that Windsor Newton also does make one, um, but they don't give you as much paint for what you get. Um, but these dot cards, what you do is you take your wet brush and you just roll it in this paint and you lift it up and you can actually do some tests and experiments with the paint from the card. So you'll need the 66 dot card by Daniel Smith. And then you'll need by um, 
It doesn't have to be by Sennelier, but I know that they're one of the brands that does sell the oil pastels and chalk pastels individually. If you find a different brand that sells an artist grade, not a student grade, but an artist grade of chalk pastel, um, then you can get that one instead. I just know that Sennelier is a really good brand. So, like, um, so, Sennelier, this is an oil pastel. You'll need one red oil pastel. You pick the red. Doesn't matter. If you want to buy a set that has a red in it and use the other colors, you totally can. But all you need is the red. The same thing with the chalk pastel. One red chalk pastel. Any red, your choice. If you want to buy a set that has red in it and use all the colors, you totally can. But all you need is the red. Okay those this one is a specific brand that you do have to get this brand the golden brand because this is the highest line that's readily available of artist acrylics we're going to get the golden six professional acrylics mixing set so you can see it comes with your primaries as well as the green your black and your white. To supplement that, you will also need to get one tube, the smallest tube that you can buy of their zinc white. If you want to split it with somebody, you can. You won't use the whole thing in this class, very likely. But you already have the titanium. You'll need to also supplement it with the zinc white as well that is made by Golden in their heavy body line. You'll also need by Golden their gels and pastes kit so this has acrylic textures we'll be doing um, some experimenting with acrylic textures and this is also going to come very heavily um, into use for your project three You will need a brush cleaner as well to keep and care for your brushes. We'll be talking about care of our tools um, in this class. The trial size is the, the largest that you need. You don't need any bigger than that, but if you have something larger or a different cleaner already, you can use that in its place. Let's talk brushes really quickly. So for this class, you'll be needing a series of, of brushes. First thing you'll need is some watercolor brushes. You'll need at least one large one that's like either a large flat or a mop. So you'll need a large soft watercolor brush and you'll need a thin one for doing fine details as well. So if you have one of each of those in like a soft watercolor fiber, those will work. Don't get the absolute cheapest, crappiest ones. They don't work very well. You don't have to buy the most expensive ones. Like the silver brush is a pretty expensive one and it is very nice. And if you do enjoy watercolors and you want to pursue them, I do recommend that you get good brushes. We're going to talk about that in this class a lot. How the materials that you and the tools that you use affect your work. So get at least something better than the absolute lowest level. And if you feel like watercolors or acrylic paints are something that you are going to be invested in, then invest more into your brushes. But at least for watercolors, one large and one small, soft. And then out of these synthetic fibers like Taclon, you're going to need a variety. You'll need at least one flat brush. You'll need one round brush right there and the round can be big the round can be thin it doesn't really matter if you have both of them bring them both you can test them both um but at least one flat one round let's see where's the rest of them one filbert right there one bright which is a little bit shorter and fatter. You'll need and one fan right there, one fan brush to test out. A lot of brushes, if you're looking for things to just test out the shape, 
Princeton makes these value packs. They're pretty good. The nice thing about this one is that it has a mixture of your bristles and uh, so your hog bristle brushes and then your softer tacklon brushes. So it covers a couple of your bases at once. Between this pack and the smaller pack that allows you to um, get some shorter brushes, I think that these all came together in one pack and maybe with one more, aha, with that one right there. So these all came together and this all came together as one pack. Between those two packs, that basically covers everything that you need for the bristle and the tacklon ones. And then if you just get two watercolor brushes on the side, that basically covers your brushes for this class. Oh yes, so when I'm talking about hog stiff bristle brushes, I'm talking about getting an artist brush that is this style. Don't bring in those like super cheapo, like less than a dollar uh, gesso brushes. Like those are not really gonna be good for you um, in this class. So rather than getting those, um, get something that's more of an artist style hog bristle brush right here. You will need either a palette or palette paper or a palette knife, I mean, um, or a plate to mix your paints on. So um, whatever it is that you prefer to do, and I even, my personal preference is to go to the dollar store and get uh, the cheapest frame that I can, well, they're all cheap, they're all a dollar. So I, I go to the dollar store, I get a frame that's the right size for me, and then I take and throw away everything else, and I just use the glass right there. I prefer to mix on glass. It's up to you what you prefer as your preference. I'll talk about why I like glass when we actually get into class. But, you know, if you're really um, tight on the budget, this is a really good place to save some money. It's just getting a sheet of glass to mix your, um, or, you know, just a plate or something to mix your paint on. That's not as important or crucial as some of the other materials that you'll be getting. You will need a palette knife of some sort. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't even have to really be metal. Um, for this purposes of this class, we are just going to be working with textures, some in an experimental way. So any palette knife is really, if it does the job, then it does the job. For some of your, um, For some of your materials projects, you will be needing a syringe, so make sure that you have a syringe on hand. Get an X-Acto knife for this class as well as some extra blades. Speaking as somebody who's had to do many projects with X-Acto knives, you know, it really does make a difference being able to buy one that has like the extra adjustion, adjustment and the cushion grip and all that sort of stuff. Like it really starts to wear and tear on your hands and your fingers when you get just the baseline one. I really, I will never go back to those horrible metal ones now that I have one with a grip and um, a plastic case. It's just a much more convenient way to hold your blade. And you'll also need some spare blades as well because you'll be doing lots of cutting. I really do recommend the kind that has the case where you can dispose of your blades inside the case. It's up to you. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's a lot more convenient. You'll need a ruler of at least 18 inches. I very much recommend the ruler with the cut guard on it. It's going to save your hands. It's going to save your time. It's going to make your projects cut nicer and neater because of the way you're able to hold the knife according to it. So the aluminum ruler with the cut guard, I super duper recommend. You'll also need a cutting board of at least 18 inches, a cutting mat. Uh, you cannot cut directly onto you know our tables in our classrooms that will ruin the tables so a cutting mat is what you need in order to produce a lot of our projects
You will need masking tape as well. I recommend either the like quarter inch or the eighth inch masking tape. Either of those will work. Anything thicker and you're not going to be able to do some of our initial projects. So either a quarter or an eighth of an inch. If you have both, you can use both because you might find the need for both of them. But having that masking tape is going to be important for your projects. You'll need a bottle of polyvinyl acetate or PVA glue. We are using this because it's a pH neutral glue, which means it's archival. It's also a flexible glue. Bookbinders use it. So compared to Elmer's, this is not going to crack your pages that you glue in from your material sampling. They're not going to fall out of your notebook with this glue. It's going to stay there for a long time. And the last thing you're going to need are sample cards when, when we will be testing substrates. So you'll need a, a hot press, a cold press. You'll also need a black watercolor. Mine has walked away right now, but you'll also need one of these that's black watercolor. You'll need one of the UPO papers. There's UPO translucent, heavy, medium, and light. Uh, you pick the one that you want. And then a stone hinge colors right there. So we're going to be testing on colored paper. And then you'll need three of these assorted packs of artist trading cards by Strathmore. They have a variety of surfaces in there. We'll be testing all the surfaces. And then these, which don't have to be purchased until later on in your semester, are certain artboards that you're going to need. So you're going to need a Canva paper artboard by Canvas. I mean, a Canva paper artboard by Canson that is 16 by 20, a 16 by 20 watercolor board by Canson. So this is the, oh, this is the Bristol board, a 16 by 20 Bristol board by Canson as well. So this is the Bristol like actual board board, not just the um, flimsy, flimsier ones that come in the pad, but the actual art board, Bristol board, and then the Montval watercolor board by Canson as well. So one of each of those you'll be using for your projects. You don't need those just yet, but they will come into play by project one. And then for your next class with the class where you're attending, you're going to need some sort of tape. It can be your masking tape. If all you have a scotch tape, it'll work for these first projects. You'll need your Tombow marker. So this is a black marker. If you don't have the Tombow, you can use another black marker just for these intro sheets. But the dual into Tombow is the one I recommend. It's going to make your job the easiest. You'll need one thin black marker as well. So this can be your micron if you have a different one that you're just using for the time. A thin black pen. You'll need your three colors. You don't have to get the black just yet of your artist grade pencil, but you at least need the blue, the red, and the yellow of your artist grade colored pencil. You'll need your three different weights of graphite pencil. So one HB, one that's just a B range. This one's a 9B and one that's an H range. This one's a 9H. Honestly, the higher the number that you get with each of them, the better because they give you a more distinct and more drastic difference. You'll need either some scissors or your X-Acto knife. So something to be able to cut with. Scissors will be a little bit easier for this first project, but your exacto knife works just as well. Um, and then an eraser of some sort. So in this case, you're already being asked for the vinyl eraser. So you'll need the vinyl eraser. You'll need a ruler or a straight edge to use for this project for, our, for your first worksheets. They're not even really a full project, but your first worksheets. And then you'll need to have your sketchbook with you. So not the, not the, more expensive or the, the nicer quality mixed media one, but just um, a general sketchbook that you're going to have a section at least made out for this class. You'll need one of those. Those are the materials you'll need for um, either if you're in person, you'll need to bring them with you. If you are in the group that's not going to be meeting in person for your first day, you'll have an online upload of some videos that you can follow as tutorials.